without having women around, there's a certain level of understanding that you can't receive from your guy best friend. Women have a different sense of nurturing um, that I think is really important to always have around. Hi there, I'm Tati Gabrielle and this is my Glamour Unfiltered. I have gotten so much feedback from women who have seen my characters that it's strengthened them. So I feel like all the way around, it's empowering. I would hope that they would find a piece of these women in themselves and be reminded and reassured that they do have stake in this world, that they do have a voice, that that voice needs to be heard and can be heard. I would hope more than anything that it would teach them to be unapologetic, unapologetically themselves, unapologetically bold. Tom Holland is the sweetest. <laughs> Very silly, very goofy, very funny. There's a picture that I took of him that I feel like encapsulates Tom very well. He's hanging from something while like flipping me off through the camera <laughs> and like, and with this very like goofy face, like, and it's, it's just a very silly, cute photo. Yeah, I grew up with Zendaya. Um, and we went to school together um, for middle school and early high school. Tom was texting her while we were shoot we were filming, and then she texted me. It was like, "Hey, he says that you're doing super awesome. I'm like sending love." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, man." I've been very grateful to have not been in any like sort of sketchy situations. I had like one small moment happen, like my very first year working. Um, that I quickly squashed myself and felt, felt very proud of myself for that and it's never happened again I'm grateful that I'm in the generation that I am in that times are changing that it's not something that we have to experience as much as like The two previous generations before us like I can't imagine some of the things that these women had to go through and that Does really like tear my heart out sometimes when I as I hear stories or as I as I when that when that movement was happening and sort of realizing the scope of it, it was like, ugh, it was sickening. I was diagnosed with depression and generalized anxiety disorder in college. Um, recently that has upgraded to bipolar disorder and generalized anxiety disorder um, and ADHD. I struggled a lot when I was in school, um, not having the proper resources or, or, or really guidance at that time. Once I got to LA, I really started on my own sort of self-love, self-care, and self-therapy. Every day I, is something I have to manage or um, take care of, but I also welcome. While I have ADHD, I'm also able to take in a lot of information all at one time. I might get tired, but that's okay. I am able to gather more information than the average person might. The idea that Marianne talks about at the end of, of season three where she's, you know, she says that, you know, I'm attracted to toxic men and I realize it's because there's toxicity in me. Um, and that was something that I was like, yes. And I was happy to be able to deliver that line and hope that other women who might be in that space, like could hear that and um, take in that conversation and for, for, for their own self. I have been in an abusive relationship before um, and it was my family um, and my loved ones um, literally had to pull me out, sort of. Um, and I'm so grateful and I thank God for them um, because yeah, I, I, it was a rough time and I don't know if I would have been able to escape had it not been for my loved ones. It was so nerve wracking. But yes, we did have an intimacy coordinator. It was such an interesting sort of strange conversation that I had never engaged in of like, okay, is it okay if he touches here? Is it like every like, like body, like can he touch the side of your butt? How about the butt cheek? Are you okay with side boob? Are you okay with one nipple or two nipples? Things that I wouldn't have even thought about if I was in the moment like uh, of just kind of going through it. Me and Penn had d developed a rhythm because I told him the first day that I came on set for our first scene, I was like, so dude, I gotta tell you, I'm so nervous, never done this before. He's like, oh my God, no, it's gonna be fine. He's like, we'll go through it. Like it, it, it ends up being like a dance if you choreograph it all. Um, and he's like, and just like, you know, talk to me. Like, let me know if you feel weird about something, if you're uncomfortable, like, and he was just so like, 
helpful and like a really like, I think great person to have as an introduction to that. In my early years of being in, in the industry and auditioning and things, it was disheartening, but not surprising that I would get a lot of auditions that, you know, on, on the thing it would read, open to all ethnicities, um, like they, they want the open casting call. And I would go to these things, do my audition, whatever. And when I would see these projects come out, it was always a white girl that was in the role. And granted, that could have been the thing that, you know, just she happened to be better or, or whatever the case. What it told me was like, I don't think that you actually wanted a different ethnicity. I think that you wanted a white girl. Giving more opportunities to people of color that they like, and I feel like even more so that now it, it's, it's almost like uh, it's being flipped on its head in a way. Now even searching for more like projects that are filled with people of color that redemption is seeming, is seeming like it's needed to be had. I grew up a tomboy and I had a lot of male friends growing up um, and still do. And I realized once I got into my teen years that without having women around, there's a certain level of understanding that you can't receive from speaking to your guy best friend. Women have a different sense of nurturing um, that I think is really important um, to always have around.